All right, today we're gonna go through how to get Betaflight to fly like KISS. But before we get into all the details, let's roll two footages of KISS flying, just to get refreshed memories on what that looked like, because it wasn't perfect. There was some yaw jitter in the beginning, there was throbbles, and some, some things that are inherent um, with how KISS flies um, based for, for this tune, for this quad. And I, I tuned that basically the best as it can be tuned. So I'm gonna release a video in a couple of days showing the two different tunes I had for KISS and one with lower um, PIDs and then one with the highest PIDs you can have. And you know, in coordinating with some guys, the, the highest looking PIDs one, which is the one I use, uh, was the best looking flight footage out of it. So go through a little bit more details, but just for this video, just go with the assumption, give me some credit of, you know, that that was tuned as good as it can be for that specific rig due to some of the limitations uh, with KISS and, and some other things that are inherent in the firmware that kind of constrains you a little bit and you can get to a certain spot and then you're kind of stuck. But again, I'm gonna roll the footage with the KISS optimized tune and then the footage from the Betaflight tune that I came up with. It's fairly close, it wasn't perfect. I, could tweak in some more things actually. So we'll talk about that after the footage rolls and then we'll go through some things with all the little different settings in Betaflight and kind of give you my synopsis of what things you'd need to tweak in.
Okay, so for the first thing that we need to do is go into the configuration tab and just get some basic things set up. Now this is Betaflight 4.3, so it's not released yet, but it will be, I don't know, in the coming months, it might be two, three months yet. I don't, I don't know what the schedule is actually. But one thing I would just set for default is 4K. I mean, you could bring this down to 1.33 and it should still work okay, but I, I don't know that it's that much difference or that much importance to it. So I would just leave that at 4K. The other thing we do want to have turned on is dynamic notch. And we do actually want to turn on air mode. I, I After further review of doing this uh, part of the project here, I discovered that KISS does have some sort of semblance of air mode because it, it's letting the motors on the right-hand side, if you're doing a, a roll to the right, motors on the left-hand side, I guess, it's letting the motors spin up to 100%, whereas if you have air mode turned off in beta flight, that won't occur. It will only let the motors spin up to 50% max. So we're going to need to air, have air mode on here. The next obvious thing that people forget all the time is set your rates in beta flight to be KISS rates. You can't set your rates in KISS to be Betaflight, it's not an option. However, you can set your rates in Betaflight to be KISS. I see people not do that all the time. That's like 90% of it is just that. So make sure your rates match between the two firmwares. That's critical. So the same numbers you'd have in KISS, you put those same numbers in here. Make sure you select KISS rates here. There you go. In the filter settings, what I would do is simplify this. I would come over here and set a static 125 uh, dynamic notch, set that as bi-quad to start, and then your PT1 on 150 hertz, again, static. And if your quad's a little noisier, you may need to bring this down to 125, somewhere in that range, 100, 125. But, and then again, set this as bi-quad here as well to start. And if your quad's not as noisy, you can bring this up to a PT1, that will reduce the lag. For this, ignore, you know, I have this, um, frame resonance thing because this frame is old right around 100 hertz so i put a static notch there but and you can do that in kiss right in kiss you do have static notches you can put and you can actually specify it's just going to be on the pitch or the roll axis where in beta flight you don't have that choice it's it's on both roll pitch and y'all actually so it, uh, beta flight's a little simpler in that regard but I, I it really would be nice to have that option to put the static notch just on one axis nevertheless ignore that here the dynamic notch you're gonna have the min, I would set around 125 and put the max at around 600. Do note in the final release of Betaflight 4.3, you're not gonna have this notch width here or this Q factor anymore. This is gonna be bandwidth, so just leave that at the default, which I think is 45. And then this will be the number of notches. I would just set that as one uh, in the actual final release. Another thing we want to do here is set TPA. I would set that to zero. The TPA influence, and it's, you can't make that exactly the same between the two. So I think the easiest thing, since TPA for beta flight is really just based on the D term by default, um, it's only attenuating the D term only. I would just take that out of the equation just to simplify it um, and set that to zero, and then the, the breakpoint doesn't matter at that point. Again, KISS has a more complicated kind of TPA regime. You can TPA each individual term differently, and then you have this TPA influence thing, which actually reduces the PIDs at low end, maximizes the PIDs, or they got up to the full PIDs gains between 30 and 50% at its default, and then reduces the PIDs again at 100% throttle. If you want more information on that, I went through it in detail in my KISS configurator video. I'll make a link to the upper right in that. Of course, the final thing here is the PIDs tab. So in here, what I would do is turn off everything you see I have turned off. So for iTerm Relax, we want to keep that on and set around, I don't know, 15 to 20-ish. You're going to have more delay because KISS doesn't really follow the sticks on sharp inputs super well. So in Betaflight, we're going to need to actually lock the iTerm a little bit there to make sure it doesn't wind up. And that segues into a good spot. The iTerm in between Betaflight and KISS is probably the biggest thing I've seen the difference between the two. And it looks like KISS, the iTerm winds up a lot more entering into a move, but as you're going back to zero stick, the iTerm has a tendency to drop down so it doesn't uh, have a, uh, it doesn't overshoot as much. Where in Betaflight, it's, it's more symmetric. So if you have a lot of wind up at the beginning of a move, you're gonna have a lot of wind up at the end of the move and then you'll see that bounce back. So in KISS, there is an overshoot that you're going to have in the beginning of the move, but as you're going through the move, it's all a blur. So you can't see the big overshoot and bounce back because it's all just rotating. It actually rotates faster and then starts to rotate slower. And then, you know, you actually at that point, you're starting to exit the, you know, slow down the rotation 
uh, of the quad to just go back to zero rotation. Whereas if that you have that overshooting at the end of the move where the quad is going to stop, well, then you see that bounce back because it's not all just this big blur and rotating. And since beta flight's a little bit more symmetric with its I-term windup, we kind of need that I-term relax. Uh, although it's not the exact same, it, it kind of suits the goal of handling the I-term. And it's not handling it exactly the same way, but it's you're not getting the I-term bounce back at the end. Uh, unfortunately, you're not getting the big wind up at, at the at the beginning as well. So you're not going to get a one to one perfect, but I don't think people will be able to notice that. Um, because again, it only really comes into play when you're making really start stick moves or full rate moves. The way Kiss handles I term, it seems a lot more akin to, I believe how Emu Flight does it. Emu Flight has a feature called I term decay. So Again, I-term builds more when you're entering into a move, but as I-term is rolling back to come back down to, to zero, it decays faster. And that's how Emu Flight kind of addresses I-term bounce back, which I believe is a little closer to what, what KISS is doing there with its I-term. Of course, we're gonna have D-min disabled and anti-gravity disabled. This is what I'm generally coming up with for the PIDs to mimic the flight characteristics we saw with KISS. So the big thing here is that your P and D terms are a basically one-to-one. -one. Uh, I'm going to show you here a calc in a little bit that maybe this could have been a, a little bit more off offset, a little bit more P gain, a little bit less D gain uh, for that PD balance between the two for, for this specific tune and, and rig. And, you know, essentially you're going to have an over dampened condition. Now, obviously in the flight footage, you saw that both had throbbles. Um, both were coming kind of coming off set point at some times with some I term stuff going back and forth. Well, that's the downside of an over dampened quad. You, it's, it's not ideal. So to mimic the behavior between the two, it seemed like that's right around the sweet spot for it. In this setup, I did add in some feed forward trying to mimic. You got to keep in mind that I had a 100% for uh, D term set point weight. So that provides a kick. Well, feed forward kind of does the same thing that as you're moving the sticks, you're gonna get this boost in feed forward, which will offset the D term and then feed forward goes away and then the D term to do any dampening it needs to do so you don't have an overshoot. So adding in, just using some equations that I've known for how you can convert from D term set point weight to what an equivalent feed forward value would be. That's around 210, so I set it 220 to have, again, that equivalence. So around a 220 is about a D-term set point weight of 100, which is what we use on KISS. Now in using feed forward in the receivers tab, what I did is simplify the filtering down a little bit. So I set this instead of filter, I set it to interpolation, just did it on the roll and pitch, and I just set it to auto for the interpolation uh, distance in for each frame. You know, KISS doesn't smooth the RC signal at all, so it's all stepped. And you see those steps in the D-term kick. You see those jumps, and it goes flows all the way through to the motor cans. You see the steps in the P-term, you see the steps in the D-term will get magnified with the D-term kick, and then it gives stepped inputs to the motor commands as well. With Betaflight, you can't use feed forward without applying some sort of smoothing. It won't let you. So, I guess the one-to-one -one would really be to have no smoothing and then just have those steps in the P term and in feed forward. So that's just something with beta flight that you can't do. You have to do smoothing to use feed forward. If you want to run it with just out feed forward altogether, the setting those feed forward values that I previously showed in the PIDs tab, you want to set those to zero. Then to turn off RC smoothing here, you would set this to interpolation, come down and set this to off and then hit save, and that will turn off RC smoothing whatsoever. Now, I did take a look at this from a number standpoint, and the best I can ascertain, because I can't really see behind the scenes on KISS, is this is the tune I had on that KISS quad, so 6P, I term about 0.45, and a 30D, which is as high as you can go. And people say, well, that's too high, that's crazy. Well, it's not too crazy. You'll see in the video I'm gonna release in a couple days that if I used a lower D term, like 15, like the norm, normal numbers, then it flew worse. So <laughs> did you want me to show worse footage for KISS or better footage? I was showed it and it's as high as I can go is 30. It's as high as it'll let you go. So it's not crazy. And Mr. Steele runs at like 22, 25. So this concept where like, oh, that number, don't worry about what the numbers are. Worry about how the quad sounds, listen, reacts. 
I didn't worry about the numbers. I just listened to the machine. If it flew better with these sets of numbers versus other sets of numbers, I don't care what the numbers are. I just want it to fly better. So that's what I use. So that all aside, these are the numbers I use there. These would be um, based on my guesstimate of how what the gain strengths would be in the calculations themselves because there's some dividers and stuff like that for the scaling and I'm getting that from uh, clean flight 1.0 because if you can look we had similar gains you know this is kiss and you can see how clean flight looked this is you know base flight or actually clean flight with the the uh, lux float so you can see the similarities in the gain magnitudes um, not saying it's a one-to-one, -one, but that's right around when KISS split off, so I'm just, you know, maybe, I don't know. So using that, this would be generally what the numbers would be. So you can see 60, 4.5, and 3,000. Coming over to Betaflight, using some other numbers in here, which you got to take this honestly all with a grain of salt. This is my best guesstimate. I can't say it's perfect, but you can see in those flight footages, I showed before the similarity between this flight and the similarity between this. Now I didn't have these exact gains because I came back to this and looked at this later. You, you know, on that flight I had 55 instead of 65 here and this was up at 55. So you can see that offset difference a little bit that would tighten up the beta flight one a little bit more. Um, but this is my best assumption that, uh, you know, between the equivalents, so you can see I'm here at 60, uh, 4.5 again and then around 3,000 uh, here as well. So this would you know, be the tool I would kind of use for me personally to see if you know, the gains between the two are making some sense. So just updating that quick, if you had more something like a three, 0 0.055 and 15, that would be my guess is around 32, 55 and 27 for the equivalent beta flight gains. But, You'd have to test it out for yourself. Again, I wouldn't, I would take this for a grain of salt and I would really just focus on what the quad's telling you. At the end of the day, it's the same machine that you're pit tuning. Well, then the gains are kind of irrelevant. You just keep moving those until you get a similar reaction from the same machine. And again, the gains are just numbers and you're trying to get that uh, equivalent reaction in your, in your flight moves. Okay, well, that was it. Hopefully you find that helpful. Obviously the best way to get your quad to fly like KISS is to just buy a KISS flight controller and put it in the quad. Links down in the video description for that equipment if you are interested, those are affiliate links. So any purchase from those does help support the channel. I'm going to take a preset I have and I'm gonna put it under my presets page here in just a little bit. So if you're not familiar with this resource, it's theuavtech.com and then you can come down here to all different types of presets. I'm gonna, again, put one at the bottom there for the KISS Betaflight to fly like KISS. With all that, that will end this series on the KISS versus Betaflight and kind of a deeper dive to peel back the onion between the two. I know I've learned a lot. Hopefully you found it interesting along the way. If you have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below and I'll see you on the next one.